Hello, and welcome to Powerful Places Podcast. I'm your host, Gary White, and today we continue our walk through Celia Gunn's Chakra Garden with Celia, her husband, Anthony Torley, and my wife, Ellen Aviva. So, welcome back. just undergoing expansion. So the voice that we are expressing our creativity is expanding, which is great after 2012, because we need to be heard now, but you know, enough is enough. And I don't know more than everything we have been talking about. And how what it is. No, yeah. And um, every bluebell that I found throughout the whole place has all been brought into here. So in March, April, it's like being in a sea of blue. It's just like being in a mirage. It's lovely. We've had um, occasions here with choirs and singing and Oh, the day that this, harps and this was sort of activated, yeah, we, activated. we had about 30 people here, all arranged on the seats and along the path, and all sitting around. We had a harp, we had zithers, and we had Native American chanting, and. We just did everything, just all kinds of expression. This is to bring out the creativity. And you'll see the rather strange shape of the path there, how it kind of opens out and then closes again. And I just did that because that's somehow what the was wanted. And when I was laying the lime creed, I thought, oh, this is silly. I've got so much work to do to fill all of this space. I'll narrow it again. But something said, no, no, leave it as it is. Do the extra work to lay the lime creed. And then we have a friend who has since passed on in his 90s, sort of an elder of the Western mystery tradition, Stanley Messenger, who came here and he said, oh, how clever of you. And of course, it's never me. It's always the land has spoken. He said, you've made it like a trumpet so that your creativity goes blasting out into the world, right? Now we proceed up a very, very long neck. <laughs> The idea was to gradually go through darker blue, darker blue, mm -hmm. but it sort of worked. But it's just to keep the soft colours now. We've got a very, very dry season suffering over here. They're all recovered. Yeah, last year the Kianosis was just humming with bees and this year it's very very quiet mm. very quiet there's a good bee there a little bit of bumblebee now this chakra is one that is not so um, well known there's a very good book called um, a question of guidance by Ruth White um, when she it was written I think in the late 90s so the altar major chakra was it's on the original Vedic model, and it was sort of reopened up to us more again back in, I think, the early 90s, late 80s. And um, it's at the back here, it's sort of off. We think of the chakras sort of tending to be on the front, and this one's right close to the reptiloid brain. And, um, and it's not on the rainbow spectrum, it's a sort of um, earthy color, coppery color. And it's the sort of spark plug of the whole system. And um, it's where you connect, as you might imagine, you, with it being next to the oldest part of the brain. It's where you connect to your ancestral timeline, to your racial memory, and also where you would speak to your spirit guide. And so I've, I've made the colors sort of darker colors, like a black elder, black bamboo, this sort of mm. more rusty color. So best as I could, the earthy colors. And, and all the flowers are like that when, they, when they're up. And, and you lilies. really have to humble mm -hmm. yourself to go and talk to your spirit guide and the ancestors. So you really have to bend down, come in. Hmm. And the pebbles making the spiral. So you go going inwards to talk to that ancestor or spirit guide get in contact with your racial memory or however you want to look at that so you make the journey inwards and the pebbles are all from my own root land my own in this lifetime of Northumberland but there's two from Canada 
because of my connection with the Indians, which I watched on as well, right to the centre of the tiger's eye, then you come back out again, back out into the world. And the chainsaw woodcarver who did the monk, who did this seat as well, which is from the crown of the beech tree, he, was, he knew nothing about chakras when he came, and by the time he left, doing all the seats, because he did all the seats, some of which have unfortunately rotted and we've had to change, but he knew so much about chakras that he said, first of all, he said, so you, you, you can't make your contact, and then you shift your position, and you look down the past. <laughs> and then he came back with his sanding machine, which I didn't ask him to do, and he hadn't done this with any of the other seats, and he sanded it all smooth. Mm -hmm. And he says, because by the time you understand this chakra, all your smooth edges, all your rough edges in life will have been smoothed out. <laughs> Here we advance into the brow chakra. So the brow, which is about harmony, justice, order, healing, wow. hmm? knowledge. Yeah. So here we have a Celtic cross, the circle of equal armed cross. So it's balance, harmony. We have the four directions exactly aligned, north, south, east, and west. They are also the four fixed signs of the zodiac. And originally we had carved thrones in here with the zodiac carved into them. And you still can see over in the east, Scorpio, there. It's, the seat is still there behind it. The other one's unfortunately rotted. So we've just replaced them this year. And they're Aquarius. And you are right now sitting in Taurus. And Anthony's sitting. Now that was Leo in the south, that's right. Taurus in the west and Aquarius in the north, which are also the four Gospels, right? Mm -hmm. So Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, mm -hmm. if you're of a slightly different persuasion. But I also made it into, because the chakra is also about healing, I've made it into a physique garden. So I've got healing herbs in here as much as can cope with this kind of earth, because I'm telling you, this was the worst earth of the whole place in here. There was nothing but cinders here, you know, cinders and coke. So I've had to clear them out and slowly try and improve the, the earth. And I'm still working on what can cope with the very dry and dusty earth that's over here. I mean, I've brought in lots of manure and lots of uh, topsoil, but still needs more. So it's, it's a constant experiment and you can see a, my larkspur is not working here. It's not too happy, so we're going to have to... But the foxgloves were happy. The lavender probably will be. And the tansy over there is happy. And the ladies' mantle is happy over there. That frothy um, lime green is... That will be happy anywhere. And the bay is happy. And the St. John's water is happy. The monkshood in the purple flower is happy. Mm. The chamomile is very happy. The honesty is happy. Lemon balm is happy, so we're getting there. And I'm honouring hawk here because I had six months experience of hawk energy and all kinds of experiences with a hawk that culminated in my grandson being named after a kind of hawk. So I'm honouring and thanking hawk for all of that. And of course the magician tucked among Merlin, tucked among the flowers there. And again, the stones, stone from Iona up there as well as the, the crystal. Now here we are in the crown chakra, and this is the Isika brooch symbol. And the ammonite is actually from the garden, because you find quite a lot here. There's another one there in the stone still. And imprints of fossils in stones. I saw one on the side of the house, so there is yeah. one. That's right. Yes, it's a that's tradition right. to put one on yeah. the other side of the house. Yeah. So here you are on the high point, you can look back over your journey and contemplate how well you did it, if you wish, or how, if you're ready to speak now to say, yes, I lived with my weaknesses and did the best I could, <laughs> as you move into crown energy. There was, this was just a whole jumble, a mountain of stones, and the earth here was just like dust. And as you see, the, this was all the area of a goat pen, and this is why we have the monk today, because they had included the beech tree in the goat pen, and the 
monk and the goats had eaten all the bark off the tree, so the mm. tree was dying because it didn't have the. And it's probably our oldest tree. We, yeah. When we had it brought down, we, Anthony counted the rings, and it was it's 150 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. so I, all these huge stones, most of them lining the driveway, the rest of them I pushed into a pile over here till I couldn't move them because they were so big. And then I began to build around them with the flat stones I was digging up. And gradually, this took shape, this cairn, which I, has gone quite of its own accord into the shape of a whale. And I think that a whale does carry earth crown energy and it carries the earth records. It's the keeper of the records, earth records. I love whales very much and that's my feeling. It's also the shape of the tour. It's the shape of the tour as is, well. Yeah, yeah as mm. well. It's every single crystal is inside there, chips of every single kind mm. of crystal you can imagine. Mm. And the flower, this, this flower volunteered itself onto it. Mm -hmm. And the colour is, is um, as you know, mostly sort of soft amethysty colour. And I put white and I like the yellow, the gold and everything like that. Mm. And um, so you can look and consider the tour. You can consider your journey from the high place. And this is, this is the last... The third eye was the final one to be activated one. This was the last... And the last we planned it up, but this one I did just before. And it's still, I've had a lot of, um, have a lot of chat with rabbits and pheasants up here and pigeons about what they've eaten. And I finally just find I have to plant what, because they ate all my campanulas, so I haven't had to slowly to remove them right because the purple flowers were all eaten before they flowered. Mm -hmm. So I've had to move them out and try something else. Hopefully they won't eat. What is this? this That's a canthus. I was going to say, it should be a canthus. It yes, looks it like is. a canthus. It's, it's, a, it's a golden acanthus, a mm -hmm. golden leaved acanthus. Yeah. I hadn't seen one quite so. Mm -hmm. That's sacred. That's the mason's flower, right? The Freemason's flower on oh. all their carvings. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. very significant for Freemasonry mm -hmm. because the um, third order mm -hmm. of columns, uh, the Corinthian order, has um, the, you know, mm -hmm. the acanthus one mm -hmm. on the top, and mm -hmm. you possibly know the story about that. In this Buddleia, butterfly bush and another one over there mm. I brought in for the butterflies specifically and they're both called peace ah. so to find peace at the crown hmm. what a journey mm. well, the building of it and the, the, the walking of it mm -hmm. and, and the unfolding of it because mm. a lot of it was hindsight you know mm -hmm. and even I mean were, I didn't shoot, design the planting I just liked plants and you know, and a lot of times I'd be given box loads of cuttings and I'd have to put more in the solar plexus until I saw how they behaved and what colour they were and what they were, hmm. you know. A lot of the tulips mm -hmm. came from the Bank of England. Oh, yes. really? Yeah. Uh, from, Stephen, from Stephen, Stephen that, that he met on Saturday. Yeah, he used yeah. to be the estates manager for the, for the Bank of England and mm. he got a fantastic golden handshake and, and left mm. some years ago. But part of his estates was managing, not personally, but managing the garden that's in the centre of the Bank of England is a very beautiful garden there. Mm. Mm. And uh, he brought us a box of tulips. Tulip bulbs, yeah. Tulip bulbs. yeah. Mm. I realised coming out of the Crown Sheffer, it's the Stargate. And the two roses. One is compassion and the other is called the alchemist. So when you go through, you get an alchemical dose of compassion. Mm. So and it's the tamarisk for the legend of Isis and Osiris. And where can you go through this stargate? Where do you end up? In the Elysian Fields, which is an apple orchard, right? And those are my apple and pear trees. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even, I mean, that's again an unfolding. I didn't plan that. Yeah, the creosote. Yeah. We've just done the yeah. mouth. Yeah. Oh yes, and on the ground, down and around here, we yeah. have cow slips, which have the folk name of um, Peter's Keys. So if you know what you're doing and know and you're paying attention, you come through the Stargate, you get the keys to heaven. Oh. <laughs> Thank you.
Go to www.powerfulplaces.info for more information and links to websites.